Boating is a big part of the Florida Keys lifestyle. In this episode, we discuss a couple different ways to store your boat at your waterfront property. Welcome to Florida Keys Real Estate Podcast. I am your host, April Struess, and today we are going to discuss docks, boat lifts, davits, Basically, everything you need to know about storing a boat at your waterfront house here in the Keys. To help answer all of these questions, we have our local expert, Kim Sauter, with All Keys Boat Lifts. Welcome, Kim. Good morning. How's everybody? Good. Kim, thank you so much for joining us. And Kim, how about you tell us a little about yourself and about All Keys Boat Lifts? I've been in business since 2006. It's a family-owned business. We do strictly marine construction. We build docks, boat lifts, uh, service boat lifts, service davits. Uh, my son works for us. My husband works for me. We're a family-owned business here in the Keys. We live in the Keys. That's nice. It's always, I think it's always important when uh, any industry try to use local just because, you know, it's down here in the Keys. We have different regulations, different rules. So definitely having someone who lives here and know how our permits work, I think, helps out a lot more when people are looking for houses and boat lifts. Knowing the conditions is the main thing in the business, is knowing the area. Yeah, agreed. So, Kim, I have buyers come down. They're looking for their dream Keys home. They want a house on the water. So they decide they either want a canal front home or they want an open water home. So say they find this gorgeous lot or this gorgeous house on the open water on the bay or ocean front. The property has no dock, but they need a dock for their boat. So when they're looking at properties, what type of docks can you have on an open water property? And what are the, I guess, concerns or things they really need to know when looking at building a dock on an open water lot? It all depends on the site conditions. We have to reach the depth of four feet. So if we have four feet right there on the open water, then they can build right against their property line. If they don't, then we have to do a pier dock that gets us out to four feet so they can moor a boat there or store a boat or boat lift or anything they want to put there. If not, you can't moor a boat if you don't have your depth. Okay, and you say four feet. So what what does that mean exactly for them? If uh, Four feet like from the bottom of the water to the top of the water? At low tide. What what is the four feet? At low tide, okay. So that can vary drastically, I would think, on obviously how far out you have to go. Correct. It, we have to get to four feet. So sometimes it depends on where you're at. If you're in, in your island, every city's different, has different rules. And plus some areas are protected. So it all depends if it's a protected area or if it's an area that we're allowed to build docks. Sometimes you can have the depth, but we're still it's a protected area and you're not allowed to build it. So the best thing is that when you're doing open water is to consult either an engineer that does permitting or consult a contractor that's been in that area that knows how to tell you what you're allowed to have and what you're not allowed to have. Okay, great. So what type of materials right now are you guys using for building docks? Or does it, again, depend on the location? It depends on the location. You can either, sometimes we have to use graded material where light can go through, which is more expensive. And then sometimes we can use just plain wood. It all depends on what your ethnic survey, what the bottom is, if you have grass, coral, what kind of uh, living life we have at the bottom, what materials we're allowed to have and use. Okay, So say they do the engineering, they find the lot, they know they can build a dock. What's the whole process? Because I know down here, obviously, permits can take a while. What's the process they go through to get permits? And how long do you think it usually takes for the permit process to get a dock? You have to go through the Department of Environmental Protection and Army Corps of Engineers first. And usually Army Corps of Engineers takes the longest. It could take up to a year to get their approval. And it depends on their workload. If they're they're really busy, it could take up to two years. Wow. So you want to start that process early then I would say. Yes. As soon as possible. <laughs> as soon as, you want to start it as soon as possible because it does take such a long time. Okay. So once you get past the Army Corps of Engineering, then what happens? Then it goes to your municipality, which is either the city or the county. Okay. And how are they on their timeline? And I know obviously it changes, but. It changes, but it's between two to three weeks. Two to three. So it's really the Army Corps of Engineering that's going to take you the longest amount of time. Yes. Okay. Yes. So then once we finally get the permits, and I know obviously Dock prices change, but is there a certain guideline someone can follow on how much peers are or how much items are to kind of say, okay, if I go this far out, it's going to cost me this much? Or does it change too much to really? It changes too much. It all depends on the engineer, what material they want you to use. So that would come in again, contacting someone like yourself to kind of get pricing on what they're looking at on for a cost of the dock would be the best option then. Correct. That way we can just give them different options, what we feel that it's going to be needed for that site. So now you have the permit. The actual construction of the dock, how long are we looking at? It depends on the backload, depends on what kind of dock it is. It, if it's a seawall, you're probably looking about a month. If you're, if you're looking at a pier dock, it all depends on where the barge is at. 
for the pilings. Oh. That can take up to six months. Okay. So kind of got the vibe here. If you are buying a property that doesn't have a dock already, just be prepared. It's not going to happen tomorrow. It's a long process. So just keep that in the back of your mind that it's going to take time. A lot of time and a lot of money. Okay. <laughs> right. Okay. So you mentioned seawalls. So say a buyer has a property. They don't want open water. They found a great canal lot, but it doesn't have a dock. It doesn't have a seawall. It doesn't have a dock. What, what are their options? They can do a concrete or they can do a wood dock. It just depends on what the site conditions are. If there's a lot of mangroves or if there's rock, if there's access to put a seawall, it all depends on your site conditions. But you can either do a wood dock or concrete dock. Okay. And there's not one that uh, regulation-wise, city, county doesn't say you have to do one or the other code-wise? No, it's just whatever's the best option. For that area. Okay. Right. So you mentioned mangroves. Obviously, we have quite a bit of mangroves. We have some properties that have mangroves, um, and that's always a topic of, can I build a seawall or, you know, wood dock where there's mangroves? Can I? Can I not? How does that process? What happens if there are mangroves on the property at the shoreline? Then we go to Army Corps of Engineers and see what they allow us to do. They're, they're, you're going to have to keep some of them. Okay. They're going to make you keep a, a preserve area, but you will be able to build a dock, but you have to keep an area to, for preserve, and then you'll have to pay mitigation, which is you have to pay them for using their, their resources. Okay, so you can. It just depends on, again, how much are they going to let you clear and how much in mitigation fees you want to pay for this dock. Correct. And I'm assuming if there are mangroves, does that even add on to the time even longer it takes a dock or is it just another hiccup? No, it, it's, a, it's a hiccup, but it's a little longer because we got to argue back and forth of what okay. they're going to let you have. Okay, great. So is the permit process for a seawall or a canal lot, is that shorter amount of time than a like open water dock or is it about the same? It's about the same. It's the same process. It's still a dock. It's still a mooring area. So that's still, it's Army Corps of Engineers. So it's, you have to go through them. And then what about, again, after you get the permit building the actual dock or seawall? Is that a shorter amount of time than like an open water dock? Or again, is it depends, obviously it depends on the situation on the, on the lot. Right. It depends if you need pilings. It depends on what, what the construction is going to be. If you need pilings, then we'd have to get a crane out there and you have to get on the schedule. It depends on what materials we have to use. But as soon as the permit come out, it's not going to be a, you're not going to start right away. We have to schedule stuff and get everything moving. So probably six months. Okay. Again, just be ready to be patient and know that it's going to take some time. It's not going to happen tomorrow, basically. Correct. Okay, so say a buyer found a property that already has a seawall or a dock. What should they know about maintaining the dock or a time frame, how long the dock should last, where it has to be repaired, et cetera? Maintenance of a dock, basically, and seawall. Wood docks are high maintenance. They're going to rust. The wood's going to rot. You're going to have to maintain it. You're going to have to replace wood. You're going to have to replace bolts. And nowadays, a lot of people use stainless. Back in the day, they didn't use stainless. So it's rotting and it rots the wood. For seawalls, if you see spalding, any kind of rebar sewing, you want to seal it as soon as possible, you know, so it doesn't destroy the dock any further. Okay. So the wood docks, is there a kind of a time frame how long they usually last for, like 10, 15, 20 years? The pilings will last you for 40 years, oh. but it's just maintaining the wood. It's changing out wood when it goes bad, if it splits. As long as we don't have a hurricane, you get 10 years out of it, as long as you take care of it. Okay. The pilings should be good. It's the, the actual decking of it. Right. The sun destroys it. Got it. Okay. And see, what about seawalls? I know you said, obviously, there's some spallings, put a coat over it. How long seawalls usually last? I think they would last quite a bit longer. Oh, dramatic. 30 years, 40 years. Right. Okay. As long as it's built to code, you're good to go. Okay. So now we have our, they have their dock or their seawall. Um, now they want to store their boat at their property, but they want to be able to get it out of the water so it doesn't, the boat doesn't corrode with the salt water. They want to lift it up. So different options of storing your boat out of the water. Davits, boat lifts, four posts. So let's talk about davits first. First, are people installing davits or are they only maintaining davits if they have them? Or are, you, are you still doing davits? Very rarely do we do davits. Mostly all we do is maintenance on the davits. Just because the davits are, are more dangerous to, they only, they hold the top of the boat. The only reason people will have a davits now would be because their canal is too skinny where you can't put a boat lift. Oh, okay. Why would a canal be too skinny? Is there certain regulations on how far you're allowed to go out on a canal? 25% of the water weight okay. is all you're allowed to maintain. That's with your boat. With your boat. So davits are kind of, like you said, only really maintaining them to keep them right now. And then, so say someone has, dav they bought a house that has davits, but they don't know if their boat will fit on those davits. Is there a rule that you're supposed to go by on if you have like a 10,000 pound boat, what size davits you should have? 
kind of along that line. Davids are, if you have model number 5500, 50, 50, you're only allowed to use 70% of that. Those don't mean you have 11,000 pound Davids. That just means that you can only use 70% of that. So usually rule of thumb, you want 7,500 pounds is about the most you'd ever put on that, but that's really straining the Davit. Mm, okay. So just because it says that it can hold that weight, don't put the same amount of weight the boat is on those Davits. Right. That's really not what it says. That it, that's just a model number that they go by. Okay. And then you, you can only use, when you go to do that, if you want to average it, 70% of that, if you put add them together, that's what you can put on those Davits. Got it. So you said maintain the Davits. So how would someone main, if they got a house and they see the Davits, how would they maintain them? You need to change the cables every two years because they are galvanized cables. The stainless cables fray too much. So you got to use galvanized cable. It fray. So every two years, change your cables and grease everything. Grease your gears, your belts, every part of your davit, your shivs to where you don't have a failure. And they should last pretty long by doing that? Right. Because the davits are galvanized. As long as the davits don't get scratched up or start to rust, then you're good. They, they last 20 years. Oh, great. And I, I know you mentioned you guys do that. You may, like if someone has a question about if they need someone to maintain them, that's one of the services you guys provide, correct? Yes. So if someone has davits, but they said, you know what, I really want a boat lift instead. So boat lifts, what exactly, not why boat lifts better, but why boat lifts different than davits? Boat lifts can lift more. Okay. Your, your capacity, you can go up to 160,000 pounds. We, with davits, the max you can go is 10,000 pounds. Wow. That's kind of a Drastic difference. <laughs> yeah. So that makes sense. So again, and I kind of skipped this, but let's go talk about the permit process for a boat lift then. How does that, if someone says, okay, I want a boat lift, what's the permit process to get a boat lift? Um, we go through the same thing as a dock, but it's faster. So we go through the Department of Environmental Protection, Army Corps of Engineers, and then your, your municipality, which is either your city or your county. And it's usually, right now, they're running between four to six weeks. Oh, that's not too bad. That's way better than a uh, yeah. full dock. A little time, but nowhere near as getting a whole new seawall or dock. Correct. And then installation-wise, once you have the permit, how are you guys on installation time? I know you have to order the boat lift, but actually the, the process of actually installing it. It takes one to two days to install and then one day to do your electric. And then we call your inspections in so your boat will be up within a week after we start the process. Oh, that's great. That's nice and quick. Really nice. So... Again, I know you said it can hold up to 160,000 pounds. Yeah. Wow, that's a boat. What, same thing, so if someone has a 40,000 pound boat, what size boat lift should they get? Like, can you get the same number? Or again, is it the same rule as the davits? It should be less. Well, you want to have a, a safe zone. So if your boat, if your boat weighs 35,000 pounds, you'll put it on a 40,000 pound lift. If, but if your boat is 40,000, you need to put it on the 60 because you have no, there's no fail zone, meaning it fills with water, or if there's a hurricane or something happens, you fill it with gear too, or something too much gas so you don't have a failure. Okay. You mentioned some about hurricanes, which is a good topic. So, you know, we have a lot of second homeowners here in the Keys who leave their boat here and they come back. So if there's a hurricane, your suggestions, uh, is it safe to keep it on a boat lift or should they drive it away? What's your thoughts on hurricanes and securing of the boat? They need to take it with them because their insurance makes them take them with them. But if you have to leave it there, you strap it, pull the plug and let water go in and out of the boat. Because if we get a high surge, the water's taking that boat off that lift. Oh, good point. Good to know. So then going back to the boat lift question. So again, they have a boat lift. They now need to maintain this boat lift, just like the Dabbits. How long does boat lift last? What do they do do to keep it in prestige condition so it lasts as long as possible? As long as you listen to the instructions and don't hardwire it and you keep your zincs on and you grease it, you maintain it and you have somebody come at least look at it once a year. A lot of people think you just add grease and that's servicing it. That's not servicing it. There's bolts that start to corrode. We see it aluminum and stainless don't go together. So with the salt water, it starts to corrosion. Only somebody that knows what to look for is going to see it. As your bunk brackets corrode, things happen. Your main structure stays good, but there's little things you'll have to change. Your bunks, your cables. There's all different things that you're going to have to change. But maintaining it once a year, you'll get a good 15 years out of it. That's great. So again, that's something they can just give you a call and say, hey, schedule once a year maintenance to just make sure this thing stays in top condition. Correct. Okay, perfect. So now there's also four posts. What exactly is a four post lift? A four post lifts on pilings, and usually it's for open water areas because you, you're, not, you're not constricted. A canal, you shouldn't put them in there because your property lines are right close to each other, and then you won't be able to pull in and out of your lift. That's with an elevator lift, you're able to pull it all the way down, and then you'll be able to push your boat off from the dock. With a four post, you can't. You have to come straight in. 
So usually that's open water because you use your pilings and because an elevator, it's hard to put on open water because there's no ground to put it in. It's straight rock. So it's a lot easier for four posts to be on open water and it's better access. Okay. So is one safer than the other or just, again, is it just because of the access and how to get to it? Is that why? It's not that they're safer than the other. It's just for the different site conditions, what lift is used. It's, it's basically what is the best lift for your site. Okay. Going back. So we know a boat lift can go up to 160,000 pounds. What about a four post? Well, a four post, that's what goes to 160. An elevator will only go to 60,000 pounds, but a boat, the four post will, becomes an eight post. And then, then once you have it, the four post goes up to 24,000, then you get an eight post lift, which is eight pilings. And that goes up to your 160. Okay. So the permit process for a uh, four post, assuming the same process, timeline, how does that work? Yeah, that's the same as four to six weeks. That's the same. Okay. And then installation though, does it, that might take a little longer because you have to get the piers in or? The pilings, yeah, it, it'll be longer to get on the barge schedule. Okay. Okay. So again, that one kind of might be a little longer because it just depends on that scheduling. Yes. Okay, great. And then maintenance, maintenance of the four posts. What are we looking at? Once a year, you want to be able to make sure everything is greased, your cables are good, your bunk brackets are good. That's the same because you're when open water, you're fully with salt water all day long. So you have winds, you have waves that hit it. So you need to maintain that lift no minimum one year at least. Okay. So it sounds like the overall theme is if you do a dock or seawall, just be patient and know it's going to take a while permit wise. And it really depends on, there's no straight answer of yes or no, you can have a dock or sea on a certain spot because it really is a case by case situation. Every lot's different. It, you could, your neighbor could have one, but you might have special rocks or special coral or something that you, or that there's a reason there's not a dock there. And then another thing when buying a property, make sure that that homeowner hasn't agreed to Army Corps of Engineers that they will never put a dock there or some kind of conditions because you have to research that yourself because there are conditions where they built a seawall, but they weren't allowed to ever moor a boat there. Just because you have a dock there doesn't mean you can moor a boat there. There's permits that, that can restrict you from doing things. Well, that's really good to know because you would hate to buy this beautiful piece of property and buy it for your boat and then find out, oh, nope, you cannot do that. Correct. Yeah, some properties, they do make you do that. It just depends on what's been agreed upon. So do your research, like everything else, do your research before you buy that property. Especially if you're buying it for a boat. Yeah. And I know we've met at a couple properties of properties. I've had buyers who liked a certain property and they're like, oh, this is great. And then turn to find out that this just, it wouldn't work for their boat. And it was great that we met up and did that. They wouldn't be, you know, have an issue down the line. So I think it's always better to contact All Keys Boat Lift or another and just, you know, make sure there's not an issue before purchasing the property. Yep. Do your research. We're always here to help. And anything that we can help you with, we'll do. If we're able to make that decision and tell you that you can have it or not have it, that's what we'll do. Perfect. And I think another important key is maintenance. Maintenance of your boat lifts, four posts, davits. It sounds like it's really key because like once a year, just to, to keep it in good shape. To, um, so maintenance of your, of your lifts is important factor too. Yes, it is. Because that way, if you're not calling us when it's broke, because it's harder right. to fix when it's broke. <laughs> right. I'm sure more expensive, too. Yes. So might oh, as well yes. do, ma- <laughs> do the maintenance plan. Well, thank you, Cam, so much for joining us today. If the listeners wants to reach out to you to have any more questions about docks, seawalls, davits, boat lifts, et cetera, how can they reach you? Uh, you call our office. We're at 101-681 Overseas Highway. And our phone number is 305-453-0076. Well, thank you again, Kim. And thank you all for listening to my show, the Florida Keys Real Estate Podcast. I'm your host, April Struess. And if you have any real estate questions regarding the Florida Keys, please feel free to reach out to me through my website at www.floridakeyssearch.com or give me a call at 305-399-6297. Have a great day.